Okay, let's talk about random colors with JavaScript. So we can generate random numbers. It's pretty easy. There's a math.random method that gives us a value between 0 and 1, a decimal number. Um, but generating colors, there's a few different formats that colors can be rendered through CSS. We have three-digit hexadecimal numbers. We've got six-digit hexadecimal numbers. A hue saturation lightness, the HSL method, where you provide a hue as a value between 0 and 359. A percentage for the saturation and a percentage for the lightness. RGB is three numbers, one for red, one for green, one for blue, in the range of 0 to 255. Or we can also use, I'm going to show you how to use bitwise operators to generate a single random number and then extract from that the red, the green, or the blue values. So it's just a way that you can process the colors a little bit faster, the random numbers a little bit faster, uh, if you're doing a lot of color generation. So we'll start with the simplest one, the three-digit hexadecimal numbers. What we need is one hexadecimal digit. So this is a number from 0 to f, or in decimal, 0 to 16. And there's one for red, one for green, and one for blue. Together, they make up the color. So I've declared a whole bunch of variables here, one for each one of the uh, functions that I'm going to carry out down here, just so I don't have to keep redeclaring and coming up with new variables. All right, my red. So I want to come up with a single random number for this, a single random number for this, and then a single random number for the blue channel. We will take math.random times 16. That'll give us a number from 0 to 15.99999. I'm going to take that and round it down. So math not floor. There we go. This is going to give me the random number. And then I'm going to convert that to a string because I want to concatenate a bunch of strings together here. I want to take a hex, the um, hash mark, followed by these three numbers. And I want to treat the numbers as if they're strings so I can just concatenate this all together. So I'm going to convert them explicitly to a string, but not just to say that it is a string, but also because this method is going to allow me to pass in a radix, or the base. This is going to be, what is the base? I want a base 16 number, which is a hexadecimal number. It will take whatever this decimal value is and convert it into base 16. Repeat that process, once for red, once for green, once for blue. There we are, there's our three values. We generate a random number three times. We do this, and then we concatenate them together. So my color will be equal to, and I'm going to use a template string here just to make it a little easier to write, my red value, my green value, oops, sorry, not square brackets, curly braces, and my blue. There we are. That's my color right there, hexadecimal. RGB, three digit. So I will set this just document dot body dot style dot background color equals our color that we just created. We'll run this. There we go. We got green, then gold, and every time I do this, I will get a different value. We can write out these colors inside the heading just so we can see what the colors are that we are going to be generating. So that's my h1 tag, and what I'll do is I will write out the color inside the h1 tag. Text content equals color. There we are. Run this. There we go. That is the color that we generated. There's another one. And you can see we can keep doing this and F is the biggest number that you're ever going to get, and 0 is going to be the lowest number that we're ever going to get for any one of these digits. There's a 0. Okay, so that's the three-digit. This one works almost the exact same way, so I'm going to copy and paste this first part. Actually, I'll copy and paste the whole thing, and we'll just make a couple of edits. This is now a value between 0 and 255, so 
256 becomes the value. There we are, 256, 256, 256. And I'm just going to write this out. I'm going to run this a few times so you see what it is that we're getting. There we are. That works great. There's 2 and 2 and 2. But here's a situation where something didn't quite work right. We got the value for red, got a value for green, and got a value for blue, but which of these two is the red, which of these two is the green, which of these two is the blue? Hey, I'm short a digit. That's what can happen when you generate a random number between 0 and 255. I can end up with a single digit, the number A, or the number 8, or the number 2. I can get a single digit showing up sometimes. So before we actually concatenate this together, we have to check on the length of the string that we created. Is it only a single digit? If it is, I'm going to put a zero in front of it. So I'm going to comment these out. I won't bother doing those calculations. Inside here, we will check each of these. So I'll do it as a ternary operator. If r.length is well, I can say if it's less than 2, then I know I've got one digit, or I can say if it's equal to 2, there we go. We'll do that. If the length is 2, then I'm just going to put whatever r was into r. We're good. But if it's not, then what I want to do is I want to combine the digit 0 as a string plus whatever r is. So it'll say that I want the string 0 plus whatever R is. And then we'll repeat this process for the green, 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 and green, and then same thing for blue. Repeat the process. So we're checking the length every time we create a number to make sure we never end up with something that's three or four or five. We always want to get six digits to do this. There we are, two, two, and two. 2, 2, and 2. There we go. So that's working just fine for us now. We're never getting a color which is a little bit unusual for what we're trying to generate. Great. So that's three digit or six digit hex. Similar just with the, uh, the added requirement that we have to check the length of it. For HSL, all right, same sort of idea. I'm generating three numbers. I'm going to concatenate them together as a string. It's just the numbers are slightly different. So for the HSL, we do math.floor, math.random, and a value from 0 to 359.99999. So we say 360, we round it down. It'll never be up to actually 360. It'll 359 will be the biggest number that we get out of this. Um, we don't have to convert this to anything, so we can leave it as a number. When we concatenate it like this, it will treat it as if it were a string. If we want, we can say to string on here, this is going to mean that because I didn't put anything in here, it will leave it as a base 10 number. So whatever this number is in decimal, when it's generated here, it's going to be decimal in its representation. Saturation. Now, this is a number from 0 to 100. I have to include 100 with a percentage sign written after it. So math.floor, math.random, and I need to go 101 because I need 100 as a possibility. There's actually 0 and 100 are both possibilities here, so there's 101 different numbers I could generate. And we'll say to string. There we are. L for lightness, it's going to be the exact same thing as we've done here. Math.random times 101, two string. Now we're going to concatenate them all together, just like we did up above here. The difference being that in this case it's not with this hash mark in front, or the octothorpe, whatever you want to call it. Instead of that, we have to write this, HSL and then the open bracket. 
at the end of it, we need a closing bracket. Instead of R, J, and B, it's H and S and L. After the H, there's going to be a comma. May as well put a space in there. There's going to be a comma and a space here. But we also need a percentage sign here and a percentage sign here. Okay, let's run this one. There we are. So this is a value from 0 to 359, a percentage and a percentage. And each time we run this, we'll get a different value. Some of them are hard to read. We're not uh, changing the color of our text to make sure that it's got contrast. That's a video for another day. Okay, our HSL is working fine now as well. RGB, this one is actually going to be very similar to what we just did here. I'll copy and paste this, make it go a little bit faster. Okay, so R and G and B. Again, 0 to 255, so 256. 256, 256, convert them all to string, no value inside of here, so it uses the default decimal, so it will stay as 0 to 255, and then we have to write it out as RGB, and then the red, the green, the blue, and get rid of these percentage signs. Alright, give it a shot. There we are, RGB, with three values. Now there is an alternative for HSL and RGB, which is HSLA, RGBA. For those, we add a value at the end, which is a decimal between 0 and 1, and it would be something like 0 0.3, would be 30%. So all we'd need to do if we did HSLA or RGBA is this final thing at the very end, we generate a random number. We don't have to round it off. We don't have to use math.floor. We just take whatever the number is and stick it inside there. So this would be the RGB, same as what we have, and then a decimal value between 0 and 1. All right, so that's the four different ways that we can do the colors, the three-digit hex, the four-digit hex, the HSL, RGB, and then the final one with bitwise operators. These colors, we're breaking them apart to make it easier for us as humans to read them and say, oh yeah, okay, that's the red part of the color, that's the green part of the color, that's the blue part of the color. But really, this is just one number. You want to generate a random color? Well, this is 8 bits, this is 8 bits, this is 8 bits, so that's 8 ones and zeros. All together, there's 24 of them. So 24 ones and zeros, that gives you a possible number range of 0 up to 2 to the power of 24. I can now create a random number. Let's say I do the same way, math.floor, math.random times 2 to the power of 24. That's going to give me the whole random number. And if, I mean, if you know what the number is, you can write it in here, or if you forget what it is, we just use math.power 2 to the power of 24. There we go. And I leave it as an integer. So this is our random value between 0 and to the power of 24. Okay, that's our 24-bit number, which is uh, uh, just off the top of my head. I think it's 12,777,000, something like that. All right, we have this wide range of possible colors. Now, from this one number, I want to extract the first eight bits are my red, the second eight bits are the green, the last eight bits are the blue value. So my R is going to be taking int color, and I'm going to slide the whole number over. So if you picture a string of 24,
let's say that this was the random color that we just generated, written out in binary, ones and zeros. Here's my red, here's my green, and here's my blue portion. I'm saying with this, this is the bitwise shift operator, what I'm saying is I'm going to slide this over. Just imagine that there's a little cliff here, and we're pushing these 16 bits off the edge of the cliff. All we're going to be left with are these. That's my red portion of the number. If I then say my green, I'm going to take int color, and I'm going to slide it over 8 positions. I'm going to be throwing these guys off the cliff, and then I'm left with this portion right here. I'm going to do a binary bitwise AND operation. With 255, that is this. It's 8 ones. It's 255. So I'm comparing these ones, the ones that are in the middle, because I only pushed it over by 8, with 8 ones. And I'm saying anywhere where there's a 1 up here and there's a 1 down below in that position, I'm going to look at every individual bit column one at a time, and anywhere there's a 1 in both places, that gets carried out into the new number, carried down into the new number. So if this was all ones, I would end up with all ones. If it's all zeros, nothing's going to be carried down, so it's going to be all zeros again. That's my green. So red, green, and blue. And it is going to be just take the whole number, and I don't care about the first bits, just and 255. So if this is our number that we're looking at, we're putting 255, which is eight ones, right here, below this, and all the ones are going to match up, both on the top and bottom, so I'm going to end up with 255, or 8 ones. There's our color. There's the R, G, and the B, and it's up to you. From this point, do I want to write it out as RGB? Do I want to convert them into hexadecimal? I can do that and write them out as the hex values. Completely up to you how you want to render it, whether it's RGB or as hex values. But we have, and I will write it out like this. There we are. So it's working the same way. I'll comment this out just to be sure. There we go. So same way. It's just using these bitwise operators, we're dealing with the numbers down at the binary level. It's just a little bit faster than trying to do math.floor, math.random, and two-string. If you're doing this every single time, it's going to take a little bit longer. If you're generating a lot of colors, this is a faster approach to take. But there you have it. Several different ways that you can generate colors randomly for your web pages. Any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will leave this as a code gist link, and I also have inside this page for you, here's a link to the template strings that I'm using and another video talking about building random numbers. Plus, this is the MDN page for the bitwise operators if you want to do a little bit more research on those. Thanks for watching.